Hello everyone, this is Alex here from the Office of Library Technology, and today I'll be showing you how to use the Scanner app, one of the several apps that we have that is compatible with the iPad Structure Sensor. Okay, the first thing you will need to do is to open the app named Scanner. Once this app is opened, you'll be met with a screen similar to this one. If the app asks you to calibrate the sensor, then click on the app link it gives you and follow the instructions. They are pretty self-explanatory. After the app has been calibrated, you'll be returned to this screen. You can notice that there is a cube in the center of the screen. This is the cube that the app will attempt to track. Anything within the cube, the app will attempt to capture with its sensor. Anything outside the cube, it will not bother with other than for tracking purposes. Make sure that the object that you are trying to capture rests completely within the cube. If it doesn't, you will have sharp lines where the application cuts off its attempt at capturing the object. If you wish to make the cube bigger, you can do so by putting two fingers on the screen and pulling outward. Inversely, if you wish to make the cube smaller, you can pinch the two fingers on the screen. Also, make sure that the tracker in the top right is set to New Tracker. If you need an object for an application like a video game, go ahead and mark high resolution color as well. It will improve the texture quality. If you just plan on printing the object or don't need the color of the object, then low is perfectly fine. Once you have the camera positioned where you want it, click the scan button on the right side of the screen. The weird colors of the object it is trying to capture will disappear and the program will attempt to start capturing the object. Once the program stops adding surfaces to the object, go ahead and move the camera to a different angle. Be sure not to move it too quickly or the app will lose tracking on the cube. From what I have found, if it loses tracking, it will not recover. It will attempt to recover, but I have yet to have it actually recover successfully. From here, just keep moving the camera around the object, trying to get the entire object filled in by the app. You will notice that it will say something like, please hold still so we can capture a keyframe. When it says this, go ahead and stop and let it capture some surfaces and then continue. The longer you capture, the more accurate the capture will be. I'm going to go ahead and speed this up because it took me quite a while. Make sure you get every nook and cranny of the object. The more complete it is, the easier it will be to print or use in whatever application you need it for. Once you have the object where you want it, go ahead and click the stop button on the right side of the screen. This will bring up a new window of the completed object. The first view it shows you is of the model exactly like how it was being captured. This is called the shaded view and is useful for seeing if you captured the entire object. The next view is called the x-ray view. This will show you the polygons that make up the object. This can be useful if you are an application developer. The last view is called the color view. This one takes a little while to process, but will show you the object exactly how the camera captured it, color and all. It is actually pretty impressive, as it can make the object look decently close to the original object you were trying to capture. After making sure that the model is something you wish to keep, go ahead and click on the email button in the top right. This will automatically email the model to any email address you wish. Just make sure that you have added an email account to your mail app on the iPad or it will not function correctly. If you dislike the model or are done with it, go ahead and click on the back button in the top left. This will erase the model and bring you back to the camera screen used for scanning. And that's it, the basics of model capture with the scanner app.
I hope that this video has been informative, and I'll see you in the next video.